in the gospel of john chapter 3 we have a wonderful interaction of jesus with nicodemus who came to jesus by night and that signifies a darkness so he comes into the presence of jesus and as part of this interaction of what he tells nicodemus we read Jesus saying for God so loved this world that he sent his son into this world that whoever believes in him will not perish but will have eternal life in verse 20 of the chapter he says all those who do evil hate the light they do not want to come to the light because their deeds were evil but those who do what is true come into the light in order to see if their deeds have been done in god one of the great gifts that god has bestowed on humanity and human beings is the gift of freedom this freedom can be used or it can be abused freedom is a power in which we can choose to determine who we really are and who we really need in this life that we may be truly free to make the right choices the nature of human beings is to sin and this has something to do with the original sin but you will notice that in paradise god who had created everything in this world crowns creation with human beings putting man and woman together to share his love and god himself is present now god reveals what they must do or what they should not do both do anything here he says except one choose not to eat from that tree so they had the ability to make a choice to listen to god and to believe in him that they may not perish this god who has provided everything has created human beings for him and unlike anything else in this world he has breathed into our nostrils the breath of life as the book of genesis says in genesis 126 we are given a beautiful description of every human being created in his image and in his likeness the image of god is what gives us our dignity there is no need for us to strive to attain it it is a gift that god has bestowed every human being himself in us his image in us we are not only left with the dignity we are gifted a beauty his likeness the ability to love the power of his love that withstands every force that opposes this love that opposes the ability to love god above everything else he bestows adam and eve choose to abuse their freedom by listening to 
the devil the devil tempts well, what did he tempt them with exactly what god has said do anything here except one thing choose not to sin i'm introducing the word sin this is metaphorically described in god saying do not choose to eat of that tree do not choose to do that in other words use your freedom to remain united to me to listen to me to listen to my word that you may not perish but you you may always have life they chose to abuse it and then notice something what happens in choosing this they are aware of what god has told them don't do it he has revealed his will what did they listen to the devil who said oh if you do this you can choose to determine what is good what is evil you will become like god in other words they are tempting i mean the devil tempts the hum human being a creature to take the place of the creator is it possible can the computer despite all this jargon or whatever is going on of intelligence it's still called artificial intelligence can the computer outdo the human being well certain some extent well we could say in playing a game or some things like what happened recently the outage but the created can never undo the creator and it was a law for the devil made and they chose to do it they chose to do it so the author of sin is human being not the devil it is an abuse of freedom in fact it is the loss of freedom and jesus in his ministry said this very truly i tell you whoever commits sin is a slave to sin and simply obeys the command of sin he goes on to point out a slave does not have a place in the household of god it is the son alone who has a place so if the son sets you free you will be free indeed john 8 34 to 36 sin is choosing to be a slave it is telling god i know what you want you have told me this i will still choose to do this come what may i will do it Now let's look at what happened because of this. Adam and Eve, a couple put together by God to share his love. Through sin, they begin to blame one another. What did Adam say when he saw Eve for the first time? In fact, he was put to sleep. and he was gifted to him by god as his wife and he said in the spirit he spoke and said you are the bone of my bone and the flesh of my flesh we are one and now to put it my way based on what happens in scripture adam after sin when he was asked by god adam where are you he 
replied God I am naked did you choose to eat of that tree did you choose to sin he never answered this directly he found an excuse blame you know this wife you gave me lord she cut and gave and i ate that's all she is the knife in my life hallelujah look at your own lives let's all look at our own lives me included it's exactly what a sinner would do the second original sin blaming why are you like this at home you know the mother in law my mother in law she is the law unto herself she doesn't even allow me to touch my husband she wants her son she wants her son and there are men who are even 50 year old who can still hold their mother but hold her wrongly and maybe the wife is over attached and then wondering what is happening nothing is working so let me have my way praise the lord why are you like this why are you angry and coming to something that happens in the bible cain kills his brother abel what does god say why are you angry that means god could see anger in the countenance in the way we look it sin can be seen outside look god says sin is lurking at your door but you must master it your countenance has fallen you are angry now how do you want to use or abuse the freedom to love he was on a threshold but he couldn't do it on his own because of original sin the tendency for a human being now that we are born into this sin is inclined to sin we are all sinners yes or no so we need a master to help us in this journey of life and that's an offer from god the word became flesh and dwelt in our midst and this word is jesus christ john 1:14 he is the lamb of god who takes away the sin of this world john 1:29 He is the light of this world that when we follow him we would never walk in darkness but would always have the light of life John 8:12 In him that is in Jesus was life L I F E and this life was the light of all people and to all who received him he gave power to become children of god who are born not of blood not of flesh not of the will of man but who are born of god and in baptism we receive this free gift in confirmation we confirm that in this journey we need jesus and we are in his kingdom the only true son through whom our sonship and daughtership is alive this word becomes flesh for you and me in the holy eucharist and we hear the priest as part of the eucharistic celebration raising the host 
after the consecration towards the end of the Eucharistic prayer. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of this world. Happy are those who are invited to the supper of this Lamb. Hallelujah. 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 This Lamb, the scapegoat for you and me, is the one who helps us pass over from a status of a child of the devil to the child of the heavenly father. There is no other way. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. The definite article, the. No one comes to the father except through me. John 14, 6. It's a bold Christian affirmation and proclamation. Why should we fear anyone? The only way to the Father is Jesus Christ, who in his total obedience takes in him all our disobedience and breaks its power through his affirmation of absolute obedience. The rock on which every one of our lives can and will sustain itself throughout the journey of life, up or down. That with King David, every one of us may be able to say, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. An affirmation of Jesus Emmanuel, God with us. God with us in our sin. God with us not to keep us in sin, but to show us what is sin and to take us out of sin. Father, into your hand I commend my spirit. The disobedient spirit of the Adamic nature of human being is taken in his obedience, total obedience, and offered in sacrifice that his blood shed on the cross. Blood is the significance of life. And unless this blood was shed, there is no forgiveness of sin. Unless there was a resurrection, there is no rising out of sin. Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. In fact, we know what we are doing. That is what is sin. Knowing it is sin, I abuse my freedom. It is he who created humankind in the beginning. And he left us in the power of our own free choice. I set before you life and death. Whichever you choose will be given. He has not commanded anyone to be wicked. He has not given anyone permission to sin. He has not. But on the cross he takes our sin. And breaks this power. And there is a beautiful scene. Of Jesus uttering the words of fulfillment of this eternal sacrifice. He bows his head down and says it is finished. And in some translations of the Bible it is accomplished. The one and only sacrifice for your sin and mine. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus clearly mentions when he was asked which commandment in the law is the greatest. He replies and in his reply he speaks of a relationship. Love the Lord your God with your whole heart, with your whole soul, with your whole mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. Matthew 22 verse 37. So unless we are united to God and choose to unite ourselves to him, we are not whole. We are divided. Sin is a division. 
an internal division division i am divided in my mind i am divided in my heart i am divided in my soul sin means i am allowing my flesh to dominate the grace of god and the holy spirit and saying no i will choose to do it i will still walk out of this marriage and i will be a single parent you can see sin in the tears of a 2 year old hearing far and mother plotting and planning on how to live separate you can know sin in choosing to determine who will live who will not live and the womb the safest place for the spirit of god to move into a biological action of man and woman in conjugal love is snuffed out through the forceps of an abortion and act my god my god why have you forsaken me is the prayer of jesus on the cross have you read that psalm look closely at verse 10 and 11 in that same psalm where it is said on you i was cast from my mother's birth on you i was cast right from the time my mother conceived me Do not be far from me for trouble is near. The child crying. I picture it that way. Trouble is near. Mommy and daddy don't want me. They would rather choose to have their lives because they say they don't have the finances. Money is your god. You cannot serve God and mammon is the declaration of Jesus Christ. If you are serving money, you will have this vocabulary or phrase in your daily language. Honey, I love you for your money. Honey, I love you for your money. Praise the Lord. What is the promise of Jesus in speaking of our daily worries? He speaks of it on the sermon on the mount. He says we are so worried about so many things, our food and drink, our clothing. He mentions it. And he asks us to look around at nature and see the birds of the air. Are they not fed? Look at the flowers of the field. Are they not beautiful? Are they not are they not clothed much better than all the finery of Solomon in fact before he says all this your body is worth more than food your body is worth more than clothing he says praise the lord hallelujah why is my body worth more food than clothing because i am united to jesus christ i am whole and i want to remain whole I want to make the choice to allow him to be lord and god in my life. I will not give this place to any other human being. I will stop living in and living out because I could be shut out. Some people are choosing marriage partners that way. <laughs> living in, living out. Some people direct their lives You see guilt is a consequence of sin and if it is not treated in the confessional you will grow to be a neurotic psychotic in denying sin where sin increased st paul says his grace abounded all the more hallelujah let's praise him raise your right hand and say hallelujah, hallelujah. let everyone raise their right hand and say hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The sin increased. His grace abounded all the more. Grace is being poured out here now. That every one of us may realize our personal sin. Stop blaming somebody else and let the light of Christ through his grace that means God is providing himself, his power, his light, his word that I may see my sin. Those who do what is good come into the light to see what I have thought, what I have done, what I have failed to do. Is it all in God or not in God? I want to know my sin and God is helping me to know my sin. For what? To lead me into righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now you choose whether you really need his mercy that is offered in the sacrament of confession. You choose it. You can choose it or you can choose to remain impenitent. Refusing his love. Refusing his grace. And it will be seen in these symptoms of blaming everybody. Including the church. Including the bishops. Including the priests. Including the religious. Your husband, your wife, your children. That's a sinner. Who projects what is in him outside. A man who goes to a prostitute and is unfaithful in his marriage will always be suspicious of his wife. The root lies inside and the house would be chaotic. What is God doing? Is he wanting to us to remain in guilt or take us out of guilt? Who can heal us of guilt? God alone. Because he is the same yesterday, today and forever. It's a choice we all have. Stop blaming anybody. The church is a community of sinners. This does not justify anybody's sin. Whether it be the Pope, the Cardinal, the Bishop, the Archbishop, the priest, the religious, husband or wife, child or anybody in this world the only one who justifies me is Jesus Christ and he justifies me when I say and confess with my lips the need for a savior and that happens in a beautiful encounter with you and God alone with a priest who is sent out to reconcile the world to him, back to God. In this ministerial priesthood. If you remain impenitent. It is denying and abusing the name of God. His name is Jesus. And he will save his people from sin. Matthew 1.21 It's an affirmation. He has come not to condemn but to save this world. You choose whether you want and need to be saved and what you need to be saved from. Your thirst could make you thirst for the wrong things. Our sexuality can become lust. And Jesus would affirm and say, you have heard that it was said that if you commit Adultery. You are not in the kingdom of God. It is a sin. He goes on to say and show the greater depth of the law. Even if you look at a woman with lust. You have committed adultery in your heart. Is that troublesome for us? Yes it can be. Any surgery. It requires some pain. You can either choose to accept it as coming from God himself 
or choose to deny it and remain in eternal guilt. What is God leading us? To the truth of our conscience. And this takes place through the grace of God in the word of God and the action of the Holy Spirit. That I may permit God to convert my heart and lead me back to him. Hallelujah. King David was free as a king. He was a king. Remember? Anointed by God to serve his people. That means God gifted him that. You could be a king or a queen in your own house as parents. And to each other. How have you used this missionary role of God? Used or abused? How is it growing? It grows in his love. Steadfast love. Even in unfaithfulness, in, in every act that is terrible, we have the attitude of Jesus. In his passion, he shows it. The nature of sin, the nature of sinful people that could cause such terrible pain and anger, but yet he remains united to the Father. The trouble is around. Look at that beautiful scene. Of Jesus bruised and battered in his passion. Standing before Pontius Pilate. Who as they believed and as human beings believed. Had the power to release him or prison him. He said you have no power unless it has been given to you from God above. In that mob fury here is one alone. Jesus who is calm, peaceful. The violence of others is seen in that bloody scene of Jesus pouring in blood. The violence of you and me in our sin. This is what we do to him. This is what we continually do to him in every sin. But he stands for us as the advocate praying that we may choose him and his blood and his body to come out of that which holds us captive. Pilate tells him, look at all the accusers. Are you the king of the Jews? He asks him first and he said, he answers it. You say so. He's communicating in two ways. For me, it is always that way. He speaks words. You are saying that already. That is what I am. In other words, he's affirming it. Look at all the accusations. Look at all what your mother-in-law has been telling you. How you got married. Look at all what your husband is telling you. Look at all what the world around you is telling you. The boss is telling you. How very small we can be made by others. Put yourself there. And see what Jesus has done for you and me. Remaining united to the Father. My food is to do the will of the Father. Have you no answer? He remains silent there. The accusations. Because that's not him. He need not answer it. He communicates. Hallelujah. What happens in that turmoil? There is the movement of the spirit. And Pilate is amazed. Pilate is amazed. Have you seized such an opportunity? Remember how we pray in the penitential rite. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned. How have I sinned? In my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Praise the Lord. The next time you pray that prayer, pray it not just from your lips, but from your mind, from your heart, from your soul, united to Jesus. Then, our confession and the ability to confess 
will come from his power not will wanting to hide and mask our sins the first letter of john chapter 5 verse 16 and 17 first letter of john not the gospel speaks of two kinds of sins mortal sin venial sin we know them yes or no yes or no what does mortal sin do what is a mortal sin what is a mortal sin mortal the very word mortal grievous i choose to go against god's command in his love he gives us medicine for the soul in the sense to know what is sin that is the meaning of the law through the law comes the knowledge of sin st paul says romans 3:20 through his commandments through the 10 commandments i know what it means to love god in the first three or oh, how all i could have chosen to reject my god to reject his love and kill his grace his love in me suppressing him we can't kill god but we refuse to allow him to act in us venial sin as we know our smaller sins however the church and god tells us that we must be able to confess them as quickly as possible why if we don't then this could grow up to be deep and cancerous david king chose to take away the wife of uriah the hittite a faithful man in his army fighting on the battle front for king david and he chooses to abuse bathsheba his king remember this king can pronounce judgment and he look at what happens one sin leads to another to another to another covering up he tries cancerous this is what we do as human beings afraid to go to the confession going unprepared abusing the eucharist abusing every sacrament ready to get married to anybody of any faith and say this is okay everything is okay that's how sex becomes lust that's how temperance becomes addiction and that is why there are many unwilling to admit that they are victims of johnny walker the talker the only label you can carry is red label and black label and what would it do to you it make you unstable in life it is there in the very illustration of how it is sold my dear friends the market is you and me keep walking keep walking will you walk on your god given legs no you can only walk on pegs small and large to the bar and back to the bar and back you can count the bars there you can count it what happened to the apostles in the early church behind bars praising god we are here their minds are with god you are now here like this those of you who cannot give up johnny walk a cigarette you're waiting for the next break 10:45 next break hallelujah you want that surge of nicotine drug inside you you want the mobile phone to because you are in a galaxy now s24 ultra there are many with apple iphone 15 or 16 pro i don't know which is the latest pro professional these are all wonderful products nothing to condemn nothing to condemn 
God has put all of this in the physical world through the laws of nature that he established, my dear brothers and sisters. If you are an engineer, you would know that it is there, it is existing there, and God has only led us to the truth of discovering these things. We are not God. Without God, it will become unethical in the way we use it. So you could be under your blanket, biting the apple and skimming it at 1 a.m. in the morning and coming to divine to sleep. Hallelujah. Because you have no sleep. I always feel very happy every week to speak when people come here and sleep when I'm talking. But I don't see anybody like that today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's praise him. Hallelujah. 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 Why am I happy? Because that's the first divine miracle. That sitting in these plastic chairs with all the inconvenience that could be there, the humidity around, you still can sleep. <sighs> Some of us go to church to sleep. Be careful how you sleep. Sleep in the arms of Jesus. Don't fall into your neighbor's lap, the lady's lap. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Falling in that lap, you will fall into a trap, my dear friends. And despite all that we get, honey trap, we are stuck to that honey. Honey. You go to church only to see that honey, if at all you go. And you're ready to follow that honey behind in the communion queue. Praise the Lord. And all that you can see and receive is that honey. Judas received only such a honey. We abuse the sacraments. Mortal grievous. Every mortal sin has to be confessed. And we receive in faith communion. Lord, I have broken away from you. You only say the word and I shall be healed. That's an affirmation of my faith. Lord, I was dead because the wages of sin is death. But the free gift that comes from you is eternal life. In Jesus Christ, my Lord, I am coming to him. Hallelujah. The father is so pleased. When we come to him, he has affirmed it. Through his son in the parable of the prodigal son. This son of mine, this daughter of mine was lost. He was dead. The wages of sin is death. But he is joyful and he runs to receive this son. Who does not have the strength to walk in the right way. That is why he is happy. Behold, happy are those who are invited to the supper of the Lamb. That we may be made whole and thirst and eat the right kind of food. That whatever he gives me is from him, his hands, from himself. Because he loves me, my job, my earnings. Will this be a blessing in my family or will I turn it into a curse? The choice is ours. Every one of us. Why are we here in this world? For God and God alone. He loves us. Hallelujah. 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 If you believe, raise your right hand and we will pray in the words of King David. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Put and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence. And take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of your salvation. Then I too will teach sinners your way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's reaffirm. Then I too will teach sinners your way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The way is the way of Jesus. He's the way. He's 
the way to the Father and he's beckoning us. The kingdom of God is at hand. Believe in the good news. It is at our hand and that is we have to be ready to receive it. The shepherd is waiting. That I may not walk any may away from the green pastures and the waters that he feeds me himself and the Holy Spirit and the love of the Father. I need him. We need him. Let's choose him. Hallelujah. 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 David heard the word of God through prophet Nathan through a story where David speaks of a rich king and a poor man with one ewe lamb and how this king took away this man took away the ewe lamb of this poor man what did David do he who could pronounce judgment pronounced a judgment whoever this is needs to die that's you and me father forgive them they do not know what they're doing into your hands i commend my spirit who is the accuser who is the accuser in the spiritual realm who is the accuser the devil the next time you're accusing at home remember you are taking the side of the devil you accuse knowing half truth call to do it speak the truth when you are asked for it never in half truth never ever whose side are you taking every day whoever this man is needs to die david says and the prophet tells him you are that man i am that man Every one of us is that. What did David do? He fell down and confessed. He became a penitent. He used his power to go down on his knees and confess and speak the reality. And God empowered him to show him that he is a man after the heart of God. One against one in whom the line of Judah and through whose lineage Jesus will be born and is born. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus does not say that we have this in us because our parents are like this. Mummy is like this. Great grandfather is this. A sinner does that. A sinner does that. It is he who has taken every curse. That we may be released from such a curse. I am the author of my own sin. The prophet Ezekiel speaks of that. A child shall not suffer for the sin of his parents. Nor a parent suffer for the sin of the child. One's own sin is one to me, mine, if it is my sin. And one's own righteousness is to you when you are righteous. Hallelujah. 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 Stop listening to the lie. Listen to the faith, the faith in Jesus Christ. And understand that in him there is always life and life eternal. If I am lifeless, I have the choice of allowing this life to come into me to show me what is dark and not be afraid of it. That is why he is disclosing sin. That is why he's showing me why some of us could be the underlying cause could be a sin. And that could manifest itself in different ways psychologically, not only just spiritually, in our work, in our relationships how we work, how we eat. There are binge eaters, gluttony. I don't know, I can't do, my daddy was like that. Who said? Confession is to break us out of the past and to allow God to help me to move into a new life. The prostitute who was brought before Jesus Christ experiences it. 
everybody accuses taking the side of satan a christian stands with christ that we may see through his eyes see through his heart read through his mind and exercise our will and every gift that god does to choose the way of jesus hallelujah 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 woman has nobody condemned you neither do i but he affirms go sin no more hallelujah when we confess the confessional is the ministry of jesus when we confess without fear because we are coming into the light we want to come to the light lord i need you i need you to know my sin is to know the need of a savior to know jesus as who he is and to experience him and to allow him to live inside we will be brought out of the tomb of sin when the priest raises his hand in absolution it's the blood of christ washing us clean through that same event hallelujah understand your faith understand the sacrament understand the need for it understand why it is a healing sacrament hallelujah only an impenitent one can refuse this mercy of god then even god cannot save us matthew 12 31 32 that is the sin against the holy spirit what is the sin against the holy spirit i know that it is sin god's word tells me i choose my will my knowledge and with deliberate consent i refuse the offer of god through his body the merciful body of christ in the church i refuse it i justify it and i say this priest that priest that bishop i know him you do you know bishops well good you may know you may know the priest you may know that sin but do you know your sin that's why god has chosen centers like this that i may know my sin not just know my sin but know that i need jesus who will never keep me in guilt but lead me to the truth of my conscience help me need to examine through his word the word indeed the word of god is living and active sharper than a double edged sword piercing until it divides soul from spirit it is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart praise the lord hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 and 13 hallelujah hallelujah every one of us is now in this state of grace to know our sin to know our sin and to allow god to do something about it i must cooperate look at mother mary for that cooperation and understand why she is our mother praying for it behold the handmaid of the lord what a confidence to express that despite not knowing fully everything behold the handmaid of the lord let it be done to me according to your word hallelujah hail full of grace is what she heard first she used it what god provides to unite with what we can only understand as a wonderful mystery that every one of us with mother mary can say blessed are you because we are blessed blessed by god to be brought out of this tomb of sin to rise up to live for god to love him above everything else and to see god in every neighbor that there will be harmony in our homes in our workplaces in society and the world we do not steal from god in the way we want we receive him as he is when we go for a buffet breakfast lunch or dinner 
you may choose to eat out of the many things there some of it can we eat all can we eat all no in the days that has long gone by for me i used to have to fly from I used to go to a particular village in nagpur sakoli village in bandara district and in those days the days of indian airlines as the domestic flight chennai mumbai mumbai nagpur that's how the flight was my return was nagpur hyderabad stay overnight early morning first flight hyderabad chennai first flight indian airlines hallelujah there in the hotel that i stayed i won't name it i've never seen such a wide breakfast spread right from 6 o'clock from every part of the world continent south north such a wide spread okay so i was wondering how they they are catering to so many people and uh, we can't eat everything can we i have to get my flight too and even on the flight they would serve in those days so double breakfast i could have praise the lord but what i'm pointing out is this when we go for such things we choose what we want and receive but when we come to jesus we have to choose him whole body mind and soul as he is and not as we think he must be when we have other idols in our life we will never see him we will be blind we will never hear him we will be deaf and we will be sick and out of joint because our flesh dominates our spirit a bag of hormones that remains dry empowered or so we think by our passionate desires be united to jesus in his passion and let the wrong passions die as you are ready to confess that you may live body mind and soul and give this life to everybody else around you your family your neighborhood and society that's a christian hallelujah let's stand up and close this session we would pray from psalm 139 and finally i would ask you to pray together the hail mary but now we will repeat together search me o god and know my heart test me o god and know my thoughts see if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in your way jesus the only way the everlasting way mary my mother in all my failures especially in sin show me the way in jesus let's confidently pray together hail mary full of grace the lord is with you blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb jesus holy mary mother of god pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death amen praise the lord god bless every one of you may every one of you receive the armor of god through the holy spirit praise the lord